Okay, so we are back. I'm here with my co-host Cam. We're going to be talking about uh, the divisions in the NBA and what each team in their respective division should be doing. Should they be rebuilding? Should they run it back? Or are they one piece away? Cam, what's going on, man? How are you? Doing well. Happy to be back. Uh, Ready to get into this. This is a lot of fun and there's a lot of moves to be made. So this should be a good one. Yeah, the NBA offseason is one of the best times in the NBA period, because you start to see all these terrible takes and you start to see all these crazy news stories that really don't have any worth. But it's just fun to kind of talk about these things. But we're going to hop into this one, starting with the Pacific Division. Before we hop into this, make sure to like and subscribe. Uh, We're at 4,120 subscribers. Let's get to 4,200. Start off with the Suns, Cam. Are you going to run it back with them, rebuild, or are they one piece away? Yeah, they're right in between. Uh, I think they're still one piece away. Got it. Obviously, we know about the lack of depth and the lack of interior defense. And I think this all starts with moving on from DeAndre Ayton. Uh, I'm making the call to Dallas right away and seeing if I can get what it takes to get JaVel McGee, maybe Josh Green or Reggie Bullock in there. We do know that the Mavs got Derek Lively the second in the draft. So they currently have three centers on their roster, including Christian Wood. So I think it's I think it's feasible to say they would be willing to move off JaVel Green. And I would try to make that move if I was them. Yeah, absolutely. What we saw in college, I saw this stat and it said that, um, or a graphic, and said the three best college centers went undrafted in the NBA because the NBA is changing. So Drew Timmy, as great of a as great as a post player as he may be, his game doesn't translate well to the NBA, and that's why paying DeAndre Ayton thirty plus million dollars to do what JaVale McGee can do on a veteran's minimum really just makes more sense for the Suns. So I agree with you there. For me, I have them at one piece away. Now they have Bradley Beal, they have Devin Booker, they have Kevin Durant, everybody knows that. And they're fully committed to a win now mindset with Matt Ishbia going all in. But we have to see some versatile defenders because it's not gonna be Beal making that, you know, taking that defensive assignment. You gotta get some defenders and you gotta get some floor spacers. That was the main thing against the Nuggets, which is why they only took him six, even though that was the longest the Nuggets went into a series. So for the Suns, I have them as one piece away. What do you think that piece could be? Who should that piece be other than JaVale McGee? What kind of defenders are you looking at for them to target? Yeah, I mean, they definitely need to re-sign Torrey Craig and TJ Warren on uh, Torrey Craig will probably get a little more than the vet minimum and get TJ Warren back there on that vet minimum. I think those are two guys uh, they have to have back for sure. Um, Kind of a long shot for them, but if you can get Jared Vanderbilt to opt out of his uh, one-year deal with the Lakers, I think that could be a really good piece for them. I mean, obviously, he doesn't need a lot of shots. We saw that this year with the Lakers, especially in that Denver series. And he can guard multiple positions. So I, that's who I'm trying to make the call to if I'm uh, if I'm Phoenix. Yeah, absolutely. It's a great point. Jared Vanderbilt's one of those players that he can kind of fit into any team because he doesn't need the ball. He can take the best defensive assignment. And he loves to get his hands dirty and do all the grimy stuff down low, you know, get all those fouls and kind of rack those up for the team. But the Lakers moving on to the next team, they're the exact opposite. They need people who can shoot the ball and make it, that can take that pressure off of LeBron James and Anthony Davis. Cam, you running it back, rebuilding, or are they one piece away, the Los Angeles Lakers? I'm running it back. Uh, I don't think they're, I don't think they, I think this team can win a championship. I mean, obviously, if you can make the swap for uh, D'Angelo Russell for Kyrie, then that's obviously what you want to do. I mean, D'Lo is eligible for a two year, $67.5 million extension. We know he's not going to get that. The Lakers have already said that they're not going to get that. So I'm going to see what the market looks like for him. If you can get him back on a contract, maybe 18 million ish a year, I would consider that. But they, the Lakers also did say they are going to do whatever it takes to keep Austin Reeves. So another guy I'm looking at from their end is George Niang out of Phoenix. They could get – or not Phoenix, uh, Philly, excuse me. They could definitely get him on a one-year deal, and I think he's exactly the kind of player that Lakers could use. Yeah, absolutely. Talking about D'Angelo Russell, people love to mention how the – playoffs are just half of a season or a third of the season the playoffs mean everything d'angelo russell was going for 20 points in a quarter damn near in the regular season and the lakers even had reports saying we're not going after kyrie we think we found our guy in d'angelo russell he's playing great and then we saw him not have that same productivity against the nuggets and against the other um teams in those in, in that playoff run and when that happened they said oh we're taking that contract right back because if you can't do it in this moment, we don't want to pay you in the future thinking that you can do it for us later on. But 
I don't know. I, I'm in the run it back area with the Lakers right now, man, because they made the Western Conference Finals. They lost to the eventual champions. The big thing for them is health. That's priority number one. LeBron had a torn tendon in his foot. They still took the Nuggets. Oh, they got swept by the Nuggets. They got to the Western Conference Finals. What can Anthony Davis do? What can LeBron James do to be out there for at least 55 games out of this season? And can the Lakers get a top four? Can they have home court through the first round and not have to be fighting to get into the play and fighting to even make the playoffs in the first point? Yeah, I mean, I think that's exactly right. And uh, I'd love to hop over to the other L.A. team now and uh, let's talk about the Clippers a little bit because they're in a really interesting spot as well. I mean, this is a turning point for the franchise. Are you going to rip it down? Are you going to trade George and Kawhi for as many picks you can possibly get? Or are you going to run it back with them again? What would you do? Man, I saw Kawhi Leonard be the best player in a series with Devin Booker and Kevin Durant. And even with that being said, he tore his ACL. I mean, he looked like he was on the top of the mountain. He was stripping KD, going one-on-one against him, dunking on him, giving him buckets. And Paul George wasn't even there. I thought the Clippers, if Kawhi stayed healthy, that series is going six or seven. Unfortunately, he didn't. And that's why I have to say you got to rebuild because you can't trust these two players to consistently be out there for you. And we're seeing the same thing with the Clippers, where they load manage so much in the regular season that by the time the playoffs come around, first of all, the players aren't ready physically to get to that ramp up that intensity that the playoffs um, hold. And then second off, you don't have the chemistry that you want with your two star players if they can barely be on the court at the same time. Now the Clippers have a lot, a lot of assets. They have a lot of tradable assets, a lot of guys, a lot of wings and forwards that can be three and D players, put the ball on the floor, facilitate for others. They can get a haul back. This just takes me back to the Shea Gilgis Alexander trade. And I know hindsight's 2020, but if you had Shea on this team, you had Kawhi Leonard on this team, it's a whole different trajectory for what we're seeing. Cam, I'm in the I'm in the rebuild territory with the Clippers. It's a tough one for me. Yeah, I mean, I agree with you. I think ripping it down is the way to go. But, I mean, if they choose not to do that and they choose to continue to con- try to contend, uh, I'm going after Fred Van Fleet if it's me. Yeah. Uh, it's It would take a lot of work to sign him outright. You'd have to clear a lot of cap space. Guys like Terrence Mann, Norman Powell, you'd probably have to let go or execute a sign and trade with them to begin with. And if you do that, I'm going after Will Barton on a veteran minimum contract. 37% from three last year. You can get him on a really cheap deal. That's the kind of wing that you would use to replace guys like Terrence Mann and Norman Powell. But I'm with you. They need to rip it all down. Yeah. uh, L.A., the Clippers, looking back on when Kawhi went there, I remember it was, what, summer going into sophomore year of college, and we're seeing Kawhi and PG go to the Clippers, and we're seeing the billboards saying it's our town now. The Clippers are going to be taking over the Lakers, and hey, Regular season wise, the Clippers own the Lakers. The Lakers can't beat them in the regular season. But what always happens? Injuries. And if you're Steve Ballmer and you're opening up a new stadium in 2024, 2025, you want to have some figureheads to be there. So I understand why people want to run it back. But for me, the playoffs is where it matters. And sorry, the Clippers just haven't shown me enough. Moving on to a team that has not been in the playoffs for a long time, made their first appearance this year, the Sacramento Kings. Now, Cam, they're young, they have good chemistry, and they're only looking to get better. They went to a game seven with the former champions. A year ago, the defending champions at that time, Golden State Warriors, Stephen Curry goes for 50 in an away game in Sacramento when they lose. Are you running it back, rebuilding, or are they one piece away? Yeah, I mean, they're also one of those teams that's in between one piece away and running it back. I mean, priority one for them is getting that Sabonis extension done. I mean, with the way he played last year, he's earned that uh, that big contract. So, I mean, they're already getting ready for it. They traded that 24 overall pick in Rashawn Holmes basically to Dallas for nothing just to clear that uh, back bad contract off their books so you can tell that they're getting ready to basically just run it back I mean I think it's it looks like they've found their core guys I mean we saw what they did in the playoffs this year they still will have that mid-level exception so they can definitely use that to add some extra depth for this team and maybe get a vet guy that wants to come in there and help some of these younger guys out but I mean I'm, I'm running it back I think uh I think they proved that they found their superstar tandem and uh that's that's what I'm doing Yeah, the Kings are the exact opposite from the Phoenix Suns. The Suns have three players who you know what you're getting from them. You know their games are all kind of similar. The Kings, everybody plays different on Sacramento. You have De'Aaron Fox, the quick point guard who can facilitate 
tears you up in the mid-range. Then you have Davion Mitchell coming off the bench, or he can be a starter sometimes. And his one job is I'm taking the hardest defensive, defensive assignment, excuse me, and I'm locking him down. Kevin Werder, I'm going to be curling all day and night, running off screens, running off screens, dribble handoffs, DHOs, and I'm shooting threes. Then you have Sabonis who's facilitating and getting everybody involved. And I'm just thinking that everybody on this team knows their role, right? They're not just a bunch of players smashed together. They know their role and then they can kind of build and grow off of that too, which is why I think Keegan Murray taking that next step too is going to be a big, big um, step up for the Kings if they can do that because you're getting a rookie Keegan Murray giving you great playoff minutes, giving you uh, great time in the playoffs. And if you can just expound on that and expand on having those young guys get those experiences early, I think the sky is the limit for the Sacramento Kings. So we both have run it back. And the last one is the Golden State Warriors. This one surprised me more than anything. You got Chris Paul thinking back 10 years ago when they're playing Clippers versus Warriors series and Chris, Chris Paul and, and, uh, Stephen Curry are going back at it, they're going back and forth, and now seeing them on the same team, Cam, I want to ask you, run it back, rebuild, or one piece away for the Golden State Warriors who traded away Jordan Poole and and replaced him with Chris Paul? Assuming the Warriors re-sign Draymond Green to his contract, which I think is kind of what everybody thinks is going to happen because they need him to be an effective defense, I'm running it back. Obviously, they've still got some size issues in the front court. Uh, so if they can get some depth there, a uh, guy I'm looking at for them is uh, Andre Drummond, who's more than likely going to opt out of his deal with Chicago. I would definitely see if you he can help uh, get Kevon Looney some help in that front court. Obviously, Draymond or uh, Andre Drummond doesn't really need the ball a ton to begin with, and I mean he's. He's a great rebounder. He's been that way his whole career. So if they can get another guy like that to help in the front court, then, I mean, anytime you got Steph Curry, you always got a chance. So, I mean, obviously try to get DiVincenzo back as well to help some, with some depth there. And, I mean, this is the last year of Clay's deal. So, I mean, assuming they re-signed Draymond, which I think is going to do, it's more than likely that we're going to lose Clay in the offseason. So that's what I'm doing if I'm the Warriors. Yeah, the Andre Drummond point's a really good one where you need – no one's – let's get this out the way first. Kevon Looney is a great player. I love Kevon Looney, right? That guy goes out there and is going to scrap down low for 48 minutes and probably come out – 17 scrap, rebounds. 17 rebounds, right? Whenever you take see Kevon Looney's – his rebounds, take the over because he's going to yep. smash that over. So 12 and, a, 12 and a half hit in the first in the first half of the playoff game. First half, easiest hitter, right? It's just absolutely ridiculous how he's just – the ball is a magnet with him and, and he just goes toward it and he's always in the right spots. But with that being said, on the defensive side of the ball, guarding somebody like an Anthony Davis, like a Nikola Jokic, you need to have a guy who can even just pick up fouls. Because if Kevon Looney gets in foul trouble, gets two quick fouls against Anthony Davis, then Draymond Green has to play the five or Jermichael Green has to play the five. And that's not what you want, which is why Andre Drummond, having a big center who can kind of take some of that responsibility on the defense side of the ball is huge. So we went through the Warriors. We have run it back one piece away. We have Kings run it back. Suns one piece away. Clippers, I have rebuilt. And then the Lakers Run it back. Uh, anything else you want to add for this Pacific division as we head into the offseason for this year? Yeah, I mean, that about covers it. Uh, a lot of these teams don't really have uh, – didn't really have a, hundred, a ton of high draft picks. So, I mean, obviously you could get a sleeper guy in some of those later rounds that could show up and give you meaningful minutes in the playoffs. So that can always help if you can find those hidden gems. We saw Denver do that this year with Christian Braun. So you can always find a guy like that. That's, that's, that's exactly what you're looking for as a team who's looking to contend. Yeah, absolutely. And then before we head on out of here, I want to say happy birthday to the co-host, Cam. Uh, really appreciate you, man. Uh, we've known each other for, for a while. So happy birthday to you. And for everybody else seeing this one more time, like and subscribe. We're going to be posting more videos coming out in the summer, trying to get this YouTube channel started back up. And uh, with that being said, man, really appreciate you guys. And thank you. We'll see you later. Peace.